Hi, y'all. I wanted to go through a couple of examples with graphs. Now, this is a little different than the graphs we did before because this is velocity versus time graphs. So remember, when you're looking at the y-axis here, this is not position, it's velocity. In other words, it's kind of speed, except it'll be positive when it's moving in the positive direction, and it'll be negative when it's moving in the negative direction. So I'm going to go through a couple of these graphs with you. The other ones I'll let you try on your own, okay? So the first one here asks us to calculate the acceleration for each section. So section A goes from here to there. That's section A. Now acceleration is the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. Now you might recognize that that is the same thing as final minus initial that would give you the rise divided by the time, which is the run. You may remember that for a position time graph, the slope was the velocity or the speed. Okay? With a velocity versus time graph, the slope is the acceleration, all right? So that's actually a pretty quick and easy way to calculate the acceleration. All we need is the slope. We go up one, two, three, and then over two. And that would be three over two. The three is in meters per second, and the two is in seconds. And so I do that and I end up getting 1.5 meters per second squared. And it is positive because it's going up. All right, letter B is from here to there. Now you might be able to guess that because the velocity is not changing, that must mean that there's no acceleration. You can get that from the slope too. A horizontal line has a slope of zero. All right, letter C goes from this point up to that one right there. And so we know the rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It went from 3 to 9, so that would be a rise of 6. And then the run, it went from here to there. That's only over 1 second, so 6 over 1. And that will be 6 meters per second squared. All right. D, last one. Again, rise will be 2. The run will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So 2 over 4, which is, of course, 1 half meter per second squared, or 0 0.5, however you want to do that. Okay? So that's kind of cool, is that we can use the slope of the velocity time graph to get the acceleration. To, that's, that's telling us how the velocity is changing over time. The second thing that we can get from a velocity time graph is this. It says calculate the distance traveled in the first four seconds. Now, if you notice, velocity is meters per second, and time is in seconds. So if I multiply those two, the seconds cancel out, and I'm left with meters. So when we multiply, that's essentially the same as finding the area. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the area between the graph and the x-axis. That area is the distance or the displacement traveled in that time frame, all right? So from zero to two seconds, this is a triangle, so I'm gonna go one half base times height. The base is two, and the height is one, two, three. Just like that. One half times two times three is three meters. So that first section right there is three meters. Now, I need the first four seconds, which means I need this section as well. And so I'm going to find the area of that. Now, that one is a rectangle. And so all I have to do is base times height. And so the base would be two times the height, which is three. And so that gives me a total of six meters. And I add those two together to get the total area of that section there. And I get nine meters. Now, if it's asking for distance, then all I have to do is find those areas and add them together. If it asks for displacement, then displacement actually wants me to consider anything above the x-axis as positive, 
and anything below the x-axis is negative. All right, here, let me show you. All right, we're going to skip to this question right here, number seven. I think you can do number six. So we'll look at number seven here. All right, this one's a little bit more challenging. Again, it wants us to calculate the acceleration. I think you can do that. For A, we would start up here and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I went down 10, and then my run is 2. So negative 10 over 2. So that would be negative 5 meters per second squared. B starts here and ends there. So that would be up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it would be a rise of 5, and then over 1, 2, 3, 4. So a run of 4. And that is 1.25 meters per second squared. Okay, notice that this one had a negative slope. Therefore, it was a negative acceleration. This one had a positive slope. Therefore, it's a positive acceleration. All right, now it wants us to find the distance traveled in 8 seconds. So that would be from here to there. So again, we're going to find the area of each of these shapes. So this is a triangle. So this triangle would be 1 half base times height. The base is 2, and the height is 5. So 1 half times 2 times 5, which that will give me 5. So that area is 5 meters. Okay. I got another triangle right here. You can do trapezoids if you want, but... Not everybody knows the formula for a trapezoid, so this triangle right here is also 1 half base times height. So my base there is 1, so 1 half times the base of 1 times the height of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that will give me 2.5. Then I've got a rectangle right here. That's just 1 times 5, so that's going to be an area of 5. And then I've got one more triangle right here from 4 seconds over to 8 seconds, just like that. And so again, I'm going to do my 1 half base times height. The base is 1, 2, 3, 4. And the height is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so that then gives me 10. So the distance, you just add those all up. 5 plus 2.5 is 7.5, plus 5 is 12.5, plus 10 is 22.5 meters. All right. Now when it asks for displacement, displacement, we're going to treat anything above the x-axis as positive and anything beneath the x-axis as negative. So what you'll notice is that I have a positive 5, which is above the x-axis. And then I have a negative 5 plus 10 is 15 plus 2.5 would be 17.5. And so when I put those two together, I end up getting negative 12.5. Now, in a sense, that should make sense because I have a negative velocity for much longer than I have a positive velocity. So if I'm traveling to the left a lot more than I'm traveling to the right, then it should make sense that my displacement is to the left. All right? So there you go. I hope that was helpful in starting to understand velocity versus time graphs. Don't get these mixed up with the displacement time graphs that you did a couple of classes ago. But I hope with this, you'll be able to answer question six and question eight below. Question eight is a little bit of a challenge. If you can do it, great. If you can't, don't worry too much about it. Just make sure that you're okay with the other questions, all right? We'll see you next time.